Carthage must be destroyed. I have the new Hail Caesar rulebook here. And not just any rulebook, it is this special edition one. I like the game so much that I thought I would get the special book for the only 200 copies. It looks really nice, it looks really beautiful. Instead of Alexander, we've got uh, the Roman in here, Caesar, we're gonna assume. And um, great looking book. It's got nice gold pages and a nice uh, black and purple bookmark. Um, however, when it came in shipped, it already had some damage on the corners, which is really unfortunate because this is a special edition book and if there's only 200 made, and you can see there, oh, somebody dropped it. Somebody did something somewhere when they were either shipping or something. And to be honest, I'm, I'm disappointed in that because if it's a special edition book, I expect it to be better protected. En route, they only put one, uh, one bubble wrap between the box and the, I guess I should be one bubble wrap, like what, you know, what am I trying to say? One sheet of bubble wrap between the box and uh, the book. And there was room around in there when I opened it. Plenty of room for it to smash around. And I think that's a little, uh, a little poor packing on Warlord's part, especially because it's such a rare book. It's okay with models and stuff because models have the sprue or even metals that they get knocked around, it's okay. But when it's a, a collector's edition book, I kind of expect better shipping. So I, I've mailed Warlord about it. I hope they can do something about it because this is a very special book to me. So, you know, other than the disappointment with the, the shipping damage that you see there, um, overall, the book is, is great. I'm gonna open this one here. And I really like this because they give you a whole timeline of a whole bunch of uh, different things. So what's different, I guess, here from you know, the old Warlord book, the old Hail Caesar, versus uh, the uh, the new one. Well, you can see here, they got the rest of the years in the back here. We got Rick Priestley's uh, signature there, the Royal Warren. Um, but this uh, book here, Hail Caesar, they basically rewrote the rules. It's the same game, not much has changed. And they have added, and I'll show you here, they've added a lot more history in the beginning. When you open up the book here in the first few pages, you're going really back in time, going back to the March of History it starts with, and it goes back and basically goes through, I'm not gonna show you all the eras here, but you go through all the historical eras and kind of see the major wars that went down in history. You the rise of Macedon there, Macedon, however you pronounce it. Um, here, what are we looking at? We looks like we've got some the Roman Republic after Caesar's death here, right? So they give you a whole bunch of, you know, history on the wars and stuff going on. And I think that's really great because it kind of, you know, if you're not sure what you want to do historically, you can start the book out by looking at all of the amazing, cool historical events that went on. And they go right up to, and I'm going to flip through here, you get to the Viking Age and stuff. I think we're in there. We'll go all the way to the War of the Roses. So it starts back from biblical era, the era. And then you can see here that it just goes through the Dark Ages, you get to Medieval. It does a bit of a jump, I think. Yeah, it goes from the Dark Ages right to the, the War of the Roses. But the point of the matter is that I think they're trying to emphasize that they're starting from Biblical and you can basically play Hail Caesar all the way up to War of the Roses now. And that's one of the big changes as well, too. There's more rules in this book to encompass, uh, I believe they call it Medieval Pike and crossbows and stuff. I'm not sure about guns, I didn't see that, but they do a bit more of the later medieval stuff, and that's a bit more than what the original Hail Caesar really allowed you to play. So it kind of like touches on the base of, uh, of uh, let's just say, the end of the, you know, big battles where you have a commander, they get to like a pike and shot era, and that kind of, kind of where it ends, right? Okay, so anyway, beyond that, most of the rules in this book are going to be the same as the original Hail Caesar with some small exceptions. Now, I've already done a big Hail Caesar walkthrough with the first book, and I don't think there's a need to do a second walkthrough in any video series with the, you know, the newest version, simply because it's essentially the same game with a few exceptions. Now, I'm not gonna go through all the rules and stuff here, but some things that I noticed right away from reading, I read the PDF a bit before I, I came in. Um, one thing that I really wanna point out now that I see it is, in the original book, when they're describing the frontages, they give you, and I think it's on the next page, they give you like a frontage count where it's telling you basically how big the units would be. This is really useful for new players because often, all the time online, we go onto like, you know, Facebook or the forums or we go on Discord chats, 
How do I base my models for Hail Caesar? I don't understand the frontage system. How deep should they be? How should it be? Look, and look at this. This time they've included a really detailed diagram of how you can set up your models in your units, right? So here's what I do, for example, for infantry battle lines. That's 160 millimeters. These are 20 millimeters each. You get uh, eight across. So eight times two is 160. That's what I play with right here for my basic battle infantry line. And then it tells you like, oh, this can be the size of a war bed. This can be the size of a pike block. But this is how the rules depict them. And I don't think they had a, a graphic or a chart before that really explain that and then it gives you all the different rules it gives you circle basis um you I mean you can use square bases if you want you know whatever whatever you want but yeah it, it gives you a good general idea too now on how to base things so that's one major change i think that's very important because a lot of people who just get into hail caesar in this kind of game they don't really at first and I, I had that too they didn't really grasp in the beginning like what does frontages mean how come i can't have like however many models I want, like Warhammer or something. So, so this kind of is a good way to, to initially set people up. So, um, any other changes? I mean, it gets into the battle lines and stuff, and this is actually really important here too, and later on I'll talk about a, a rule that I've already seen online and discussed and, and, and then read it myself. But one thing is that in the battle line, a battle line formation is basically, you know, a, a line of soldiers, like here, these guys are in a battle line, right? Now, there's some exceptions here because now they have something called Warband, which they had before, and they also have, where is it? The Pike Block. It specifically says here that the Warband's formation, that is that they're formed in like a loose fitting, they don't really have a battle line, it says they can't form into a battle line. So just remember that for now. It says here they are not allowed to form into a battle line as described here, okay? And it also says here, with the pike formation, the usual formation is they're equi they, they are, you know, they're in a pike block. Their pike block is the usual formation, the such troop is equivalent to a battle line. Therefore, they're not allowed to form into standard battle lines. So pike blocks themselves, um, they're kind of their own thing, they're kind of their own battle line, okay? Um, so far, I haven't, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna look at everything here, because a lot of this stuff is, is similar, tiny formations, division. Um, there might be some odd changes I've missed or something. I haven't played for a while, but so far everything I've seen has been pretty much the same. And I'll, I'll, I'll go through things here as I see it. Um, I don't know if I'll find it as I'm flipping through the book here, but there is a section where it talks about close ranks. And if you played the old version, you know when you close ranks, that's when heavy infantry, I believe they have shields in the front. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong about that. Um, it used to be only battle line heavy infantry could close ranks. Now medium infantry can also close ranks, which is a big change because now I can run like, for example, my, my Sam Knights. I'm actually going to look up in the, let's see how good the table of the, the, the contents is here. Let's see. They actually, and you can tell here too, the contents even much more detailed than the original book. It was, it was, it was harder to find everything, but now you can, you know, you look at everything here and everything is uh, way more detailed than before. That's, that's awesome. Um, I'm just looking for closing ranks. If we can find it here, I don't know if it's going to say it in here still. Oh, yes, it does. Look at that. Close ranks. 118. So that's really useful. There's another change in the book. It's much easier to find things if you want to find it. So, okay, here's some close ranks. Close rank, okay, they do have to have a shield, and they have to be in a battle line formation over open ground. Not disordered. da 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 this means that an, in, any infantry unit equipped with shield and fighting in a battle line. It says any infantry. I think it was heavy before. So now, uh, even even light, I guess. I guess light units can do it as well. So that's what I'm reading here. So units in close rank receive plus one to their morale saves and suffer minus one to hit. So a unit that had normally four up and four up and etc. Right? Okay. So that that's a big change. Like it was only heavies, I believe, before that could do that. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's that's how I remember it being. Um, any other changes that I've seen in the book? The flanks and the stuff's the same. Um, there's something about the orders that are different now. And we'll see if we can find here. You know, I should just look at the table of contents because it's so much easier to follow now. So let's see here. Orders, commanders, special orders, one, three, five. Look at that. How am I, I just think it's faster to find everything now. They've learned a lot, they've rewritten the book. Things are more clear in this book. It's, it's, it's a great update, honestly. I think it's been good so far. Um, 
a lot of these orders are the same. There's the reserve commanders that you have, you know, someone dies and a new commander comes on. They have the old ones, like they talk about the generals allowed to do a reroll and, and follow me and stuff like that. Some of the similar rules. Except they've added some other things, like a general advance now. Now, a general advance, you know, when you're playing a game and you want to, like, do a divisional order in the past, you could do that. But now you can do a general advance for the whole army. And you don't have to measure from the actual general's head is how I... I understood here, right? Because normally when you give an order, you take it, you take the commander, you measure from the commander, then they test for the orders, and then there's like distance penalties if they're giving individual orders. But now he has something to speed up the game. It's just a general advance, right? The whole army, okay? It has to be by the army general. Um, and, you know, it's the only order, it says here, that must be first and only order given by any commander. So it's only the general. Basically, the entire army just general advance. It's not a charge. It's not an attack. It just means moving up. So you give out your order that you're generally advancing. And then it talks about some blunders here. Um, there's blunder rolls. You're not going to do a whole, uh, I forget the term, but there's, you know, you're not, the whole army's not going to go book in it, but you've got some results here that are not as, uh, as penalizing as like a single unit miss, miss, uh, missing their order. Now there's also another order here called where is your courage. Okay. So that's another, that's another new rule here and uh, basically this is basically when your whole unit and your division is kind of broken up and it's completely shattered here right so it says here where's your courage is a special order that can only be by the general so these are these aren't you know these aren't commanders can't just do it, it has to be the army's general itself right it allows a unit from a broken division to recover its fighting status and join the general's own division so that's that's very important because oftentimes when you're playing this game your division breaks that division is booking it. So if you lose over 50% is what the traditional one is. You lose over that, your whole army, or not your whole army, but your units, your, your division starts leaving. It starts leaving the field. And then, you know, you've lost the unit. With this, where is your courage, your general? Because you can like grab one of the units from that other division and now bring it back into the fold. So that's, that's a good thing. Sorry about the dog. There's some kids and stuff in the background you guys might hear, so I apologize for that. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on. Um, and then there's some other things here that they get into. It talks about on the battlefield how commanders work and stuff, but that's, that's not rules any there. Um, but other than that, basically, yeah, I'm not going to go into big details on that because I think you guys should get your own book and <laughs> see it too. And I'd rather, you know, just explain some of the differences in there. Um, and other than that, everything I've read so far feels the same is basically the same. Again, then they get in the end of the book here, they start getting into the unit types. This is similar to the old book. And they always have tidbits of information here. One thing I've noticed different in the Hail Caesar here is now, in the old book, you had models from all sorts of manufacturers. I don't think I've seen any models that aren't something Warlord sells. I think everything here now is a Warlord model. So I haven't seen any, I, correct, you guys can correct me if you have the book and you've seen some in the book. I haven't seen any Foundry. I haven't seen any other models from elsewhere because Warlord now, oh, that's not true. They do have Perry. I shouldn't say that. They do have Perrys, but again, I don't think Warlord has uh, their own line for War of the Roses. So they do have some Perry in there. I take that back. They do have some models from other companies and they've included a lot more art from all over. I mean, I think each section is accompanied by, um, it's probably Peter Dennis art there. He's a great artist. Anyway, um, also, there are, I believe, some added rules for um, the special rules section. Like, I don't, I don't remember. If, I think crossbows were in the old one. I don't remember. I don't remember carry and carry. So that's new. Um, and uh, it says carried infantry move in combination with a mounted unit. So I'm, I'm wondering if this is going to be... Um, okay, it's kind of like a Germanic form. You know, in the, you know, in the ancient times, there's some... Germanic or even in Alexander's army, maybe there's a cavalry and they, and they have like infantry running along with them. Basically, they can carry along a light infantry unit of a similar size. So I don't know if then is they're actually carrying it or not. I didn't quite look into that one, but that's a little different. Um, everything here is pretty much the same from I remember. I didn't remember the carried one and then yeah, everything I, I think I've, I think I recall everything else here. Phalanx is the same. Pila was the same. Scythe chariots are the same, where they can't, you know, jump into a. They can't support anything really. You know, they got scythes. They're not going to get much of a, a support from that. Um, tough fighters the same, and then they have a nice little summary of the useful rules for all of them in the back, which is nice. 
Then there's some terrain in here, and in regards to the terrain, I feel terrain is always something you can just modify and edit yourself in the rules, but they give you the terrain orders here. Now, there is something new in here. I'm gonna see if I can find it here instead of jumping back to the beginning. Army list, they have army lists again. The old book had army lists too. Now, this book, yes, they had points. The old book also had points. Um, I like playing without points and making up my own units most of the time. There's one more thing in this book, and I, I don't remember if I had a section. Oh, yes, here. Siege and Assault. This is, I think, they have some new rules here. And I might, I might do a video on this to see what's different, because it's a little more, a little more complex. And before, it was a little more simple. And you can see that it's a rather uh, extended, uh, I would say, an extended version of what happens in Siege. So there's actually quite a few things in here. So yeah, the Siege and Assault stuff is, is also different from the first rulebook. They get much more into detail with doing actual sieges. So we'll have to try that out in some games as well. And then they got a rule summary here in the back, which is always nice to have. Um, and I think this is great, because when you're playing and you don't want to jump through the rules so much, you can quickly take a look here and see the rest. So, and then again, in the end of the book, they got all the references, like the break tests and stuff like that. So, yeah, amazing that the book itself, oh, look at this, I'm number 84 out of 200. I don't know how many they've sold. Um, I, I'm number 84, and as I was saying before, I had the, shipping damage so i hope they can do <laughs> do something about this because i want to be an 85 you know it would be okay i wouldn't be so you know i wouldn't be so disappointed if it was the uh what's it called a regular book you know like a regular version of the book because i'll be like this is the regular rule book but because it's a, a collector's item i was hoping to have this on my counter open it once maybe for you guys here on the channel which i kind of just did and I mean, I'm not gonna damage it or anything after I've opened it here, it's still gonna be special, but I just, I, you know, I hope Warlord can help me out and do, <laughs> do something about this, just because it, it's, it, I'm supposed to damage it, not, not the shipping or you guys, right? It's supposed to come in pristine, and that's what I expected, so. Anyway, that's my little uh, share on the New Hail Caesar rule book. Um, I need to go through the rules a bit more than what I've read, but overall, same game, some additions, some slight changes, but if you've played the first series of Hail Caesar, there's almost nothing changing. Like you could basically bring those rules over and with a few tweaks, if you want to add them, you could easily start playing the second version of Hail Caesar 2. I don't even really think it's Hail Caesar 2. It's more just like a clarification, better organized version, and uh, so a little bit of an addition to, to rules and such uh, in the game. So, so if you have the book, let me think what you, or let me know what you guys uh, think of the new rule book. And uh, if you, um, you know, if you haven't played before, I have a whole series where I basically go through it. I may do a siege section for the walkthrough to kind of like complete the whole series, but otherwise I don't think I'll be refilming it just because I think, uh, I think my walkthrough already covers basically the generic and, and most general terms of the book. So anyway, that's it. Let me know what you think and thank you guys for watching. We'll see you all on the next video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.